Embassy will be fantastic. I just got the photograph. By tomorrow, 6 o'clock news, I want the world to know that Hollis is dead. Richard, caught me again, huh? Well, I'll tell you, it sure feels good playing the junk man cutting these cars apart. Like the old days. Hit a try it sometimes. Relieves the tension. Come on, let's talk and get with the helicopter. I got one more car to steal. You still going to Reno tonight? Yeah. Okay. Well, have a good time. And Rich, on the junkyard party, I don't care what it costs. I just want to be a good party, understand? Okay. Okay, we'll see you later. See the brick Red. Right right in front of the Queen Mary. Put it down there. Now, right next to it. Here yeah, we go. So just put it in the parking lot. Good. CJ1, this back party white channel notify LA County Sheriff's Bureau. Uh, Bureau. The stolen helicopter just landed at the Queen Mary. Suspect accomplice in B parking lot. Notify all units. Code 3.
Attention all units, GTN Congress, Queen Mary parking lot. Any available units, respond code 3. Lieutenant Reed, I've got the Pacific Coast Highway into the riverbed secure. He's not going to get through this way. Oh, I'm a wild bull rider and I love my rodeo. I got you now, you dirty rat. You got no place to go. Oh, the walls are high. You can't get by. My boys are up ahead. You scream and shout. You can't get out of this here riverbed. <laughs> Move over, Willie Nelson. This is the Bricklin to the Buzzard. Can you hear me? Come down and get me. I'm in a box. I'm setting the car in cruise control, tying the steering wheel, and climbing out. Now. This is Gibbs. You guys back off and give that chopper some room. We don't want to get anybody killed. I gotta talk to you. Guys, this is Michael Fox, public relations man for Hollis Productions. How you doing, guys? All right, where do you want to start? I'd like an interview with Harlan Hollis. So would I. Look, uh, couldn't we get it done Monday at the studio? Okay, that'd be fine. But in that case, how about an interview with White Axton? No problem. Phone call for Michael Fox, number four. Why is Eleanor still here? I told you to get a prep for the premiere. Hey, boss, she's already painted. I understand that, Brian, but she's still here. She's got to be at the Cinerama Dome on Tuesday. Call transportation, get her on a truck. Today. Yes, yes boss. Will you move this cotton-picking thing before it scares somebody to death? I got to quit screaming at all these people. Hey. You gotta lose Excuse my... me. Hi, Harlan. Hello, Susan. How are Hi, you? Boys. Hi, Susan. Hello, oh, guys. I'd like to uh, yes. get an interview with you. Oh, be my guest. First thing I want is the boss's itinerary for tomorrow. It's on your desk. I don't want it on my desk, honey. I want it in my hand. Okay. Well, Susan, we, you don't really work for Harlan. You work with him. You know, he's on the job, and you have to try to keep up with him. <laughs> I really like it. We're having a good time. Dad, the dive's just on the brick, and they're bringing it up now. How do you fit in around here? Well, I'm Harlan's brother-in-law. Really? Yep. He was married to my sister, and uh, she died of an automobile accident. 
Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, Mike. Hi. I want you to meet somebody. I'm sure I don't have to introduce Susan to you. Right. But this you? is Nick. He is the skipper of the Goodyear Blimp. Skipper. Oh. And he works in PR. Not as good as I do, but he works in PR for us. Hi, Susan. Hello. Nice to meet you. What are you guys doing down here? Well, Mike, I'd like to give this to Kelly. Uh, we don't have enough time to stay around. We're on our way up to Paso Robles to do the James Dean event. Hey, she'll love it. Thanks again, guys. Okay, nice okay. meeting you. Nice meeting you, Susan. Maggie, put this with Kelly's thing. Don't let us see. So you've been here since the very beginning of the business? Oh, yeah. Three blockbusters, and with a little luck, this will be number four. But why all this activity four days before the premiere? Well, let me tell you, Harlan thinks that if a movie doesn't excite him, it's not going to excite an audience. And we have three minutes. Three minutes, if you can believe, at the beginning of this film that does not excite him. So therefore, what we have here is not chaos, it's total confusion. Hi, come on. Oh, hi, baby. What do you want? Hey, I was wondering, are you going to come up to the ranch for the barbecue? Ah, jeez, I'd really like to, but I don't think I can, honey. Well, with all the stuff i got to do before the preview, I'm sorry. Michael, who is that over there? Oh, here. Here's a rhino hide. Hey, hey, hey. Remember who has control of all the money here. Okay, okay. He's a nice old rhino hide. Get out of here. That is Richard Harris Hill. He's president for life, chief of staff, otherwise known as Hollis's general manager. Just how big is Hollis Productions? <laughs> I wish I knew. I can't really be specific. All I can tell you is that outside of the film operation, there is everything from copper mines in South America to cattle ranches, and Richard controls it all. That's it, guys. It's a wrap. All right. What's going on through there? Oh, where do you see what Harlan's got for Kelly? Come on. Happy birthday, sweet Kelly. Give Uncle Hoyt a kiss. Happy birthday. Pretty good. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday. Michael asked me to give you a personal tour of my office, and I have the office limousine standing by. I'm ready, Harlan. Don't Ciao, guys. La -di -da. This is a limo. Here with the high rollers now, Susan. Okay, Kelly, beam us up. Display taken care of? No. No? You know, maybe, just maybe, I could come in this place one day without going crazy. I'll take care of Maureen. You get these to Michael and get him to Harlem. Harlan B. Hollis, 
will hereafter be referred to only as the target. Under no circumstances is the target to escape this area. This is the ranch, and this is the James Dean Festival site. The target is scheduled to make an appearance tomorrow at 10 hundred hours. Magnum, you will have a clear view of the ranch. You will be the forward observer notifying Blackbird and air cover as to his choice of routes. You are to terrorize and destroy any and all vehicles in the red zone. This whole deal is bulls. A procedure has been set by our client, who, by the way, will be flying cover one. Now, our client wants a publicized elimination. Now, I suggest you move out. Another rough day after the James Dean Festival. I'll come back and go horseback riding, all right? All right. He's beautiful, just what I always wanted. I promise I'll take good care of him. I know you will, Cal. You get to be a big girl now. Oh, Dad. Be a good boy, huh? Come on, we have to talk. Sit down. You know, Cal, since your mom died, I've tried to be both mother and father to you, and it hasn't been easy. I know. I want you to know that I love you. I tried to do the best for you. Now, when I was growing up, there were 13 kids in our family, and sometimes it just wasn't enough to go around. So just remember, you have a lot of advantages most kids don't. So appreciate what you have, and realize that these advantages bring responsibilities. Don't take things for granted. I'll always be proud of you. And I'll always love you. I love you, Kim. I love you, too, Dad. that extra three minutes I want to change in beginning the movie. We're in the tiny town of Shalam, California. Its population of 65 will swell into the thousands as fans from around the world gather here to pay tribute to a great American legend, the brilliant star of East of Eden, Giant, and the classic Rebel Without a Cause. It was 25 years ago today that Dean and his mechanic passed through this town on their way to a road race in Salinas. They never made it. Okay, what time we go? Can I go be at the James Dean event and today's Kelly's birthday. I'll be back at 6, okay? 6 tonight? Tonight, okay. See you later, PJ. Bye. Bye. Why are you sponsoring this event, Mr. McMullen? James Dean meant a lot to me. And as you can see with the turnout here today, he meant a lot to many other people as well. Thank you. Mayor Schwartz, you were broadcasting a football game live at the time of the James Dean tragedy. Can you tell us about that? Yes, my brother Dale and I were live over KPRL from Bakersfield. And unknown to us, my sister Dorothy back at the station in Fast Rebels kept interrupting the program with the bulletins about James Dean's death. George Barris, everyone knows you've designed enough cars to earn the title of the custom car king. What's special about this car? Well, Susan, Jim was a personal friend of mine, and I found him to be original and really a one-of-a-kind guy. I customized the Cruise and Merc. 
with kind of that in mind. Target on time. Heading south on Union Road. Gray over Maroon, Cadillac, El Dorado. All units copy. A milestone in history is taking place before my eyes as ever loyal fans keep arriving by the thousands, many in custom cars of the James Dean era. To think that his brief life touched so many is obvious here today. James Dean burst into the world as a star the likes of which the world has never known. Completed three films and was nominated for an Academy Award all in less than a year. If you can't decide the sound of my voice, you are not too far away to come and join us here at uh, the James Dean Festival in Chelan, California. Matter of fact, we just presented a trophy from coming the furthest to a French church club all the way from Paris, France. I had just come on duty when the call came in, and when I arrived at the scene, the Ford was sitting in the middle of the roadway, and the Porsche was on the north shoulder up against the fence. James Forget Dean. about it. And while you're at it, forget about the party, too. Oh, come on, Glo I promise I won't do any more fast driving today, okay? Well, promise. Okay. Karen, you sure look beautiful. Carla, where the hell have you been? Very busy. I've missed you. <laughs> missed you, too. Hey, listen, I'm having a party for Kelly this afternoon. It's her birthday. What are you doing tonight about a 7? What's for dessert? We'll think of something. Listen, I've got to run. i got to go to the James Dean event, so I'll see you at 7. Okay. Okay. Hey, my favorite hat. Sorry. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't know. Something fell off and set this fire. Where the hell he go?
come to the house and call the police. Get going. Hello? Damn it. So I cut the wires on my phone. I don't believe this stuff. Dropped by aircraft. Union Road at Bennett Ranch, south of 46. Vehicle is on fire. Respond code 3. a side road that cuts through the hills that'll take us to a union road then it's straight to us 101 that way we can miss all this traffic another susan clark special shortcut listen this time i have a map oh got a map oh great last time she only had a hunch out Officer been shot. One half mile south of Highway 46 on Union Road. My unit is on fire. All units be advised. We have an 1199. Shots fired. Officer down. One half mile south of 46 on Union Road. All units switch to tactical white channel. Repeat. Tactical white channel. Notify Sheriff Whiting, Deputy Slane has been shot. Can you get out of the car? Attention, all units. North Adam 9 reports a sighting and encounter with a blue and white aircraft. Canyon Creek Road, west of Union. 
Aircraft dropping explosives. Be advised, two aircraft, repeat, two aircraft, one blue and white, one black. Use extreme caution. Oh, wow. North 77 to dispatch. I've been involved in 1181, six miles east of 101. Canyon Road, possible injuries. Paramedics en route. Attention, disregard down, officer. Deputy Slane was wearing a bulletproof mask. Condition reported good. Real nice uh, shortcut, Susan. I like the cows. I especially like the bumps. 
Jack, now how was I supposed to know this road was going to be so bumpy? A big-time newswoman like Barbara Walters, now she would have known. She wouldn't take us on a bumpy road like this. Yeah, well, Barbara Walters wouldn't be working with you two. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, boys and girls, now what? Well, is this Union Road? Who cares? It's paved. Which way? Left.
units. Sheriff Whiting is en route to command post at Turner Road and Union Road. All available units set up roadblocks at Jensen and Union Road, McMillan and Turner and Jack Road and Weaver, Badwater and Tyler Road. Estuvo a toda madre. Simón, Simón. Ey, guachaste todas las rucas que estaban ahí. Ah, santa ruca, sobre chingada. Mira, te se nos hace con la maría, hombre. Chale, nos agandalló con la ruca, loco. Sí, nomás claro. porque trae un pinche bolsón de gripa. Wow, hombre. Ah, cuidado, güey. Channel units, command posts now set up at Turner and Union Road. Command posts now operational. All units be advised. Sheriff Whitey now at command post. Stand for. What's the situation? The surreal message. We set up command posts here, here, and here. 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 And here.
Reader reports vehicles have been hit by gunfire. Squad is temporarily pulling back 1024 miles east of command post. What happened? All we know, we had an officer shot and units have responded. And what's the condition of the officers? The unknown at this time. Do you have any suspects? All we have is three dead bodies at this time. What about the airplane? Have you found it? Uh, we've notified FAA on the airplane. Are you Chief Matheson? Yes, I am. I understand you were a friend of Harlan Hollis. Yes, I was. Do you know why anyone would want him killed? No, I don't. What I've witnessed here today is just unbelievable. Do you think that he had any underworld connections? I have no comment. I just talked to the coroner. Nothing's left. The heat. He was cremated. Let's go home. Hi, Chief. Have you seen my dad? Can we come in and talk to you? Oh, 
Well, Bruce, on your side. This is the Channel 3 News Bulletin. Multi-millionaire businessman and movie producer Harlan B. Hollis was killed today. Mind me calling New York in the morning. Listen to this. ranch in the vicinity of Paso Robles, California. Authorities have released little information, but reports indicate that Hollis was able to evade his killers for nearly 20 minutes using the driving skills he'd perfected while filming his action movies. The assassin's automatic weapons and grenades rocked the rural countryside, blowing Hollis and his Cadillac off the road, striking a propane tank, and ultimately crashing into a house. Death came seconds later as both house and car erupted into a bowl of flames, shooting hundreds of feet into the air. It is known that two of the killers died in fiery crashes during the pursuit, but no motive has yet been established. Harlan B. Hollis, 39, dead today at the hands of unknown assassins. I can't believe that. This is Morgan Lofting, Reno 3, Nevada. Harlan? You gotta help Harlan. me. Harlan! I thought you were dead. Oh, my head hurts. You look terrible. But if you got hit by a water tank, you'd look terrible, too. How'd you get out? Oh, I jumped that landed right off my head. Oh, well, you gotta God. get into a hospital. No. No hospital, Susan, no. You gotta get me back to Los, An Los Angeles. Oh, God. I gotta know who's trying to kill me. Harlan, that's what the police are for. Susan, I don't want to go to the police. I want to find out myself who's trying to kill me. It's very important. Work with me on this. I'll give you the exclusive. Give me to the premiere. All right. Thanks. Let's get out of here. It's okay, Farah. We'll make it to the L.A. County Fair. You'll see. Six thirty. Where the hell have you been? You know what this is? A newspaper. It takes a long time to print the newspaper, but they can do it faster than this crew can give me stories. It's been a long day. I know. I can see it's been a long day. And what the hell happened to the car? Come on, Kel. We have to go back to Los Angeles. The plane is waiting. Right over there. Come on. The story here in the Herald Examiner says that Harlan was a nice guy. <laughs> well, you just can't believe what you read nowadays. Thanks, guy. Susan, I really want to thank you for bringing me up to your house like this. Well, Harlan, it's a trade-off for some answers. Look at this. We found your picture at the plane crash. That's a publicity shot. I haven't even seen it yet. Well, then that means that it must be someone inside your company that's trying to kill you. I just don't want to believe that either Richard, Michael, or Arthur would want to kill me. Well, somebody has gone to a lot of time and trouble to get rid of you. And they've been pretty damn obvious about it. Dennis, unless they got a house production ID card, they don't come through that gate. You got it? Even the press. That's, wait a minute. It's employees only. I don't want to make this a damn carnival. Is Holland really dead? I don't know. I don't know any more than you do. Look, Michael is up taking care of Kelly, okay? As soon as you hear from Richard, let me know. We just saw on the news the FBI has entered the investigation. The state attorney general's office, too. Yeah, look, Susan, we could get in real trouble here. We are TV technicians. We aren't detectives. But we made a promise. We have to stick to it. Susan, you made the promise. I don't want to see us get thrown in jail over this. Come on, guys. We're a team. Let's all make breakfast. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Honey, you want to put the dog in the uh, car? No, keep him. He's a bear, not a dog. Of course, any fool can see that. We'll get the rest of this stuff, OK? How'd you do it? Listen, I don't have time to fill you in now, okay? Don't tell anybody you saw me, and as far as you're concerned, act like I'm still dead. 
Cal? Do you need any money? Cal, you got any? Plenty. Kelly! Officers! You see the little girl? I gotta go, but I'll leave the money in the driveway. Okay, don't tell anybody you see me. Right. Oh, come on, here I am. Bruce. Uh, cops. We got cops. Susan? Harlan's gone. Cops. We got cops. Great. Go talk to him. Come on. No, you take care of it. I gotta get my shoes up. Come on, Bruce. Okay. You tell him. Wait a minute, please. Hey, Larry, why the police? Uh, need a character reference? Don't touch me. What happened to the news cruiser? Do I get three guesses? You get your pink slip. Now, I got called out of bed this morning because you two don't answer the phone, you don't answer your beeper, your cruiser was wrecked. Now, of course, I'm sure neither one of you know anything about this. Oh, I know I don't. Uh, Jack does. Me? Susan? Clark, come over here. Hi, boss. I was rudely awakened this morning. I have to answer to the New York office. You were hired to cover the news, not make it. What happened to my news cruiser? Oh, no, we were sleeping. We were sleeping last night, I remember. Well, it was... It, I don't know it was here last you night. You don't it, know what happened no. to the news cruiser? No. Okay. Now, what about the exclusive, the Hollis exclusive? Did we get well, that? Well, boss, you see... What? Well, what? no. We didn't get it. Can we get it? Well, now, you it's know, very we don't important. Have a, I don't know if we can get in. We don't have the news cruiser. You don't have the news cruiser? Is that why we can't get it? Is that the reason? Well, I have a car, Susan. We can both get into the car, you and I and the crew, and we can go and we can get that exclusive, which is very important to us. Sure. No problem. Uh, guys, get the equipment and uh, we're going. It's gone. Beamed out. That's it. Boom. It was taken. Explosion. It looked like World War III. It was terrible. I, I just don't know. <sighs> Doesn't make any sense. I know, but, Michael, we still have a story to do. That's why we're here. We'd like to get inside. Well, Richard runs the company now. Whatever he says goes. Look, uh, the best I can do is ask. How's Kelly? Ah, uh, she was down this morning, but after we left Harlan, she perked up a little. Are you going to be keeping her? Yeah, I'm guardian of her estate. So you're taking over for Harlan, then? <laughs> Me? No, 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 no. That's uh, Richard's job. He'll run the whole show now. I'm gonna stay in PR. Arthur will move up, though. Uh, we'll probably refuse a raise and keep the points. <laughs> points? This is it. The Palomino Club just pulled the parking lot. Don't you have anything else? Look, it's the yellow vet. Oh, I think it'll do the okay. job, okay? Thanks a lot. I Can we reach you? No, I'll be in touch.
Richard, Susan Clark is here with the crew. They want to finish up the story. Today? No way. I don't want to turn this thing into a sideshow. Hey, wait a minute. We got an obligation here. And not only to her, but to the press in general. And we can't lock this place up. Let's deal with the reality of the situation. Huh? Listen, the reality is we don't know what the hell is going on. Now, we're going to open this damn film in two days. Now, how are we going to have a gala premiere with Harlan's death hanging over our heads? But it's public relations. That's my job. Listen, we got nothing to hide. Now, let's let her in and deal with everything up front. No, Michael, you are wrong. We can't do that. Damn it, Arthur. We owe this to Harlan. Uh, Richard, this is your company now. What do you want to do? You want to let him in or not? Let him in. Yeah. Well, the FBI are here, and I sure as hell don't want to talk to hey, them. I can't deal with it. Let's take the back elevator, OK? Give us a minute. He's waiting. Talk about heavyweights. Four of the top criminal lawyers in the state. I'm sorry, Art. I didn't see any other way to play it. Michael, I will play it either way. I just want to know company policy. <laughs> so we both know where that's coming from. Boy, the FBI, Susan, what next? Michael, Lillian just calls. She thinks Kelly needs you. Now? <sighs> that's all right. I will show Susan around. Thanks, Art. Yes. We're ready for you now. Gentlemen, I guess to start with, how many toys are in this collection? Well, not counting the cars, I'd guess about 200,000. Of course, we got two storerooms full of boxes we haven't even unpacked and put on display yet. So the collection isn't finished yet? It is finished, Ms. Clark. It is very finished. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Agent Reynolds. This is Agent Gehring. Morning, gentlemen. How may we help you? We're here to establish the whereabouts of Mr. Hill from Saturday evening through this morning. Are you Lord. suggesting that Mr. Hill is a suspect? I didn't say that. But it's true he stands to gain a great deal from Hollis's death. Unless you have a search warrant or a federal grand jury indictment, I suggest this meeting be terminated. This meeting is terminated. Now, wait a minute. If you need anything further from our office, you contact either myself or one of my colleagues. Mr. Hill will have nothing to say to you. Gentlemen. Just what will your position be now that Harlan is dead? Is there uh, some little point here that I'm missing? Well, Michael mentioned to me that he'll be managing Kelly's interest in the company as her guardian. And that you've got points in the film as a bonus. Isn't that true? Yeah, that's true. I assume, then, that the news coverage generated by the assassination will help to increase the film's box office returns. Well, I suppose we will have some additional audience, yes. Some? Mr. Wheeler, this is the biggest story in the country. You couldn't buy that kind of advertising. But I don't understand what news has got to do with my ad campaign. But isn't it true that the more people who come to see this film, the greater your share of the profits? Oh, wait a minute. If you're insinuating that I'm going to use Harlan's death to increase my personal fortune, you are way off target. Now, I think it's time that we brought this little tour to an end. So if you'll excuse me, I have more important things to do.
Control, we have an intruder in the east wing. down the street like this, you know. No this guy runs right oh, across in front of us. We like to hit him in the end or kill him. Yeah, we're right across the street to the store over there, I think. Yeah. The mm -hmm. liquor store, I think. Right. Is that what you want? We're going to a story. Oh, uh, look, we're with Independent Network News here, and we've got to cover a story. There's a, there's a plane going down at LAX. We've got to crash pretty like close. Stay, but we got to go. go. You know? we gotta go. I'm the one that called. Security. You know, you never would listen to me. I kept saying, buy American. And these foreign cars, they're like toys, you know? Right, take it to the studio. Okay. If it's gonna bother you, me stopping for cigarettes, just say so. You know, Rich, I have really grown to love these little chats we have. I've been checking the wires. I haven't seen much on the plane. I guess it's our exclusive. Nobody knows about it. Where did you get this picture? He qualifies as nobody. Ten seconds, everybody. You're holding back information on me, aren't you? Larry, we're about on the air. Hey, don't give me any of that crap. Now, who do you think you are? I'm Susan Clark, and this is the news update. The Harlan Hollis murder still tops today's news. Authorities working on the case are releasing very little information, but the FBI disclosed this morning that one of the planes used in the assassination was stolen from John Wayne Airport in Orange County, California. Audrey Farber reports from the Los Angeles Federal Courthouse. Larry, just don't move. Larry? Yesterday, you told me you had a dynamite story. 
Little did I realize that meant that Richard Hill and Michael Fox would nearly be blown to bits. Now, you know something about this, don't you? Larry, I'd tell you, but you'd never believe my source. Yeah, okay, and I don't believe I'm doing this either. What? Giving you this file from research. It's on recreational planes. You're on your own from here. Stand by, coming out, Dave. How can I thank you? Just don't do anything dumb. Stay tuned for more news on your independent network news station. Well, you've come to the right place. That's what I understand. I got your name at the Reno Air Show. Saw a couple of biplanes there I'd like to know more about. I think it was called a pit. Well, they're great performers, I'll tell you. And they're the best acrobatic plane built. They're handcrafted, so there really aren't too many of them around. Could you fly one of these close to the ground? I've seen guys fly under trees in these babies. Well, no wonder two of these were used in the Harlan Hollis assassination. Oh, job. I'm awfully busy. Just a few more questions? Uh, yeah, just uh, call me later. I'll rearrange my schedule. I'll do that. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Enjoy your new car, Mrs. Playplin. Thank you. license number on that vet.
long-haired fella running around here in a suit? Huh? Let's set this up out. He should have been here by now. Hey, he'll make it. He's a big boy. He can take care of himself. Okay. Well, I'll run and see how much longer the movie has. Okay. Yes, give me the Cinerama Dome. Sunset and Vine in Hollywood. No, I don't have the number. Yeah, you have to get it from information. This is an emergency. Cinerama Dome, hold, please. They put me on hold. Yeah. Operator? He's got some trouble. Don't even think that. Man. He's wearing my suit, you know. Oh. It's almost over. Did you think he'd at least call? Yeah. Give me the Hollywood Division Police Department. I know your cat died, Mr. Horowitz, but that's no reason to jump. What do you mean the police department line is busy? Keep trying. Put an emergency call through. How good are you? Can you put this thing down on sunset? No way. We've got to, Dick, and we don't. Someone's going to get hurt down there. I'll get you close as I can. Well, maybe get me close to a building I can jump off. Come on, Nick. Sunset's pretty wide. You should be able to drop it in there. Take her down. Okay, let's go. Hello? Yes, I'd like to talk to the sergeant. Could you hold on, please? Oops, sergeant, we've got a blimpy bomb guy on three. Sergeant Gullen here. This is a Goodyear blimp. We're coming in for an emergency landing on Sunset Boulevard. There's a limousine parked in the parking lot with a bomb in it. Uh, what's your name, sir? Harlan Hollis. Yeah, and I'm Woody Allen. This is Harlan Hollis. What's your phone number and location? If you look out your window, you'll probably see it. Now, you better hurry up because this bomb's going to go off any second. Uh, this is Sergeant Cullen. Dispatch the bomb squad and all available units of the Cinerama Dome. Take it around and turn around that building right there. We should be able to come in right over the dome. It's a full house for the premiere of the latest Hollis production, and we're... Look at the... It's the blimp! It's coming down! Okay, it's looking good. I don't see any power lines down there. It looks pretty good. Well, if this doesn't work, I'll be looking for a new job.
Harper doesn't get in the third level is our man. There's a bomb in it. Let's go. Some answers, Michael. See all of that? Huh? That's me. I did it. Now you make movies, that's all. The reason you're successful is because of me. I created the image. I'm the reason that those films are box office smashes. But you, you've got it all right in the palm of your hand. You and Richard. Well, now it's my turn, and I want it all. You're gonna have to use that thing, Harlan. <laughs> you never learn, do you, Harlan? You're still a junk man. I'll tell you something, Harlan. I'm gonna kill you. You know something else? I'm gonna get rid of Richard. And I'm gonna run the company through Kelvin. You wanna know something else? All these people watching, huh? Well, they're gonna think it's a publicity stunt that you brought up. Just a terrible accident. It just didn't quite work. Fair girls too shame. As soon as this traffic starts moving, we're going to the top. <laughs> 